And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Mr. Magic himself, Paul Romany. Paul has been working the international circuit for magicians and thrilling audiences with his sense of fun and great magic routines. We welcome Paul Romany as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Paul Romhani. Hey, how are Welcome. you? Welcome. Thank you. A magician on the beat goes on. Yeah, like that. Just like that. Absolutely. How do you be a ma magician? It's a... You know, I started as a kid when I was eight years old and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I saw a Charlie Chaplin movie, and we'll get into that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I saw, uh, 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 saw a magician and I just knew at the age of eight that's exactly what I wanted to do. And I saw, um, I saw the Muppets. So I, wanted, I started actually as a ventriloquist of all things. All those things influenced me. And at eight, that's what I wanted to do. I yeah. wanted to be a magician. Make me disappear, Paul. And I... Gee, that was great. Right. How did you do that? Right. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. You've got to tell me how you did that. Ten thousand dollars, anyone can learn. What I want you to do is tell me how do you make a seven four seven disappear? Some of them have done that, haven't they? Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, but magic is based on basic principles. So you can mm. take those basic principles and you can make a spoon disappear, or a deck of cards disappear, mm. or, or anything. Um, and uh, you, you apply it to larger things, that's all it is. So how many days of the year would you spend outside of New Zealand? Uh, there was a time when they, I just, we just moved back to New Zealand. My wife's Canadian. Uh, I was living in Canada for a while. I moved there to be closer to her. Um, so uh, she hates that joke, um, <laughs> as you do, apparently. Uh, so uh, we spend uh, quite a bit of time out of New Zealand. We just moved back in February this year, so we just relocated back. We, uh, the past 12 years, we've been traveling the world on cruise ships and, and working all over the world. And we decided we were living in New Brunswick in Canada. It got down to minus 40. Mm -hmm. So my wife looked at me one day and said, minus 40, what are we doing here? Yeah. And she loves New Zealand. So I said, well, let's move back. So we're just basing ourselves here. So let's have a quick look. Who needs a, ma a magician today? You've got cruise ships. You've got uh, Las Vegas type entertainment. You've got uh, corporate functions. Yep. How, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many places that you can... There's so many different facets of magic. You've got close-up magic, which I'll share later on. So you can, you know, magicians can work in restaurants. Pretty much any situation, you can, you can use a magician. Mm -hmm. Now, my magic isn't, is, is, is comedy-based. I do two sorts of styles. So I can work anywhere. I've, I've performed uh, in, in, in huge uh, theatres around the world with, you know, 5,000 people. Uh, on the cruise ships now, you can get 3,000-seat theatres. It's ridiculous. Or I could do a, a show close up, one on one, um, mm. in a boardroom. Any, pretty much anywhere you can work as a magician. So it's a, so it's it's, it's portable like that, you know. And because we travel so much, we have to make the act portable. Because we can mm. hop on a plane. Like next week I'll be booked in Italy, so I might have to fly there. So you can't take a lot of gear. So yeah. everything's portable. Now you're constantly thinking about the act, improving it, and bringing new characters in. And one of the success stories has been Charlie Chaplin. Absolutely. Yeah. You. you <laughs> You've done a great deal of great work out of Charlie Chaplin, haven't you? Since I was eight years old, I've, I've been fascinated with Chaplin. And the great thing about Charlie is that he's an international character. And even today, uh, no matter where I go in the world, we've worked in Dubai, uh, China. China was a phenomenal experience. Um, even young kids, everybody still knows who he is. So my show is a tribute to Charlie Chaplin. And it's a magic show as Chaplin. It's universal. We've done, uh, even on cruise ships, we've been booked to go on ships where you've got uh, just a thousand, um, 1,500 people, all Korean, no English, so my act fits perfectly, you know, so uh, we get, that's the great thing about the act is that it's silent, but it's visual. But Chaplin, even today, is still universal. The act I've created, doesn't matter where I work in the world, it'll work for anybody. Any, that's the great thing about Charlie Chaplin and now, magic. And this is a baby boomer chat show and there's a lot of granddads out there. I'm a granddad and we're all thinking, looking at our grandchildren. What would you say to a young boy who is interested in becoming a magician? Even a young girl because yeah, young girl, it's a great, yes, absolutely. Exactly. Um, you know what, uh, you can, there, there's a couple of, uh, you can either a couple of things. I, when I was young, obviously I went to the library and got books out. That was the first mm. thing. And then uh, you can get onto, just get onto the internet and then type in magic and you'll have a thousand different sites and YouTube links. Um, it's just like anything, uh, whether it's music, if somebody takes an interest in it, um, it's great to encourage uh, something like that, it's a performing art. The other great thing about magic that I've found with young people is that if they're shy, uh, it, it gives them some sort of something that others can't do. Not mm. in a show-off way, but it's just a self-esteem, it gives yeah, them self-esteem. Exactly. So for young, like uh, grandparents uh, encouraging kids, um, it's a great way of, of, of if, a, if a child has some sort of you know, lack of self-esteem or something, this is a great way to, magic's a great thing for them to be able to learn self-esteem. I'm dying to see some close-up magic or give me an example well, of magic. Well, you know, I'm dying. I'm oh, let me show you, you can't get any closer <laughs> yeah. than this. So 
this is, people always ask, can you show us something that you can do at home? So mm. we're just going to use some dental floss for this. The idea is actually, now you can try this at home, it won't work, but you can certainly try it. Get those pieces to stick onto this other piece. It's not as easy as it looks. Take it like this, I think I've got it, there it is, look at that. Now that's not really magic. Magic would be if I were to blow it and it becomes one long piece, you see? That would be magic. Gosh. What does this kid do for a day job? You're a genius. <laughs> That was marvellous. It's the only good trick I do, apparently, but thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me show you something with a deck of cards. A deck of cards, right. So here it is. These are just pieces of cardboard, nothing, yeah. you know, just pieces of cardboard, playing cards, 52 of them. Would you please do me a favour? Uh, first of all, do they look all different? They look all different. I can see That's that. the wrong deck. Doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we'll use what we have. Just uh, re reach there and pull one out, please. Anyone. Reach one and pull one out. Just like there we rehearsed. We now, um, <laughs> would you take the card? This isn't a magic trick per se, yeah. it's more of a gambling demonstration. I'm allowed to show the audience. You can show them that yeah. one. Take the pen and that's the two of spades. So the if you two of spades. Write, 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 write your name on the two of spades. Right, so Jared. Do it in a New Times Roman font size big, 12. A big uh, cross on it, so there we are. <laughs> and writing's fine, good. <laughs> Perfect. You can see it, it's written. Now if you, you would just uh, place that back, you would agree that that is indeed a marked card. That is a marked card. Because you know it's marked on the front. You may not know this, Jared, but it's also marked on the back. Check it out. It's very subtle. You don't need these go-go gadget glasses to see it. But, oh, there it is. I think that could be it. What do you think? See, there's one there marked on the back. Well, let me just have a look. There, the Oh, there it is. The two of spades with your name on it. Le don't believe oh, no, let, let, We'll try something else. Let's try something else. Just, uh, just say stop whenever you like. Just stop, stop. Stop there. Stop, yep. Have a look at that one. Don't tell me what it is, but have a look at it. Yes, I Got can it? see it. Yep. Okay. Again, tap the deck. Now, this is neat because... Now this time it's not marked on the front, but it is marked on the back. It does have a red back. Check it out. Mark, the one you just saw has a red back. Look. Oh, Want to see a coin trick? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what was it? Can you tell me what it was? What, what did you just look at? It was the two of clubs. You see that one on the table that's been sitting there? Yeah. The red one? Two of clubs. Wow. But we, we, we lost your card. But you see the wallet? Inside the wallet, check it out. There's a that's zipper. That's amazing. There's a zipper yeah. compartment. If I, yeah. if I undo the zipper, Inside there is something else. Inside there is actually an envelope. Not just an envelope, but inside there is a sealed envelope. You can see it's sealed. It's an envelope that is sealed. If I rip open the envelope, inside the envelope, inside the sealed envelope, if you open up your hand, please, you'll find, you can take it out, a signed playing card. Is that your original two of spades with your name? Absolutely. <laughs> what does this kid do for a day job? I don't know. <laughs> That's brilliant. Now the poker game starts in <laughs> 10 minutes. I'm dealing my cards. <laughs> that all happened in front of my very eyes and I was completely mesmerised by it. I didn't see this. That's, that's magic, isn't it? It is magic. That's and that, magic. that's the beauty of it is your reaction. And, mm. and uh, oh, let me show you something special. Yeah. Um, do you remember, I don't know, one of my favourite things as a kid was to collect snow globes. Did you yeah. ever collect snow globes? Yes, I did. I think yeah. they're great. There's something magical about yeah. snow globes. Have you seen the snow globes of the 21st century? No. They're called ice snow. I just wanted to show you this, ice snow. Check yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a snow globe. But it's a, an iPhone. Yep. See? Um, it's quite neat. But, but it's quite realistic too because if you watch, um, we can actually probably get, if I shake it, <laughs> you can get snow coming down. How about that? Just for my iPhone. <laughs> I snow. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Paul. Merry, Thank Merry you. Christmas. Same to you, Gerard. Thank you <laughs> now, very much. Paul, that's absolutely amazing. So if anybody would like to have Paul Romhani to come and see them and, and do a magic Christmas show um, or any type of show, well, how do they get hold of you, Paul? Um, pretty much uh, it's through the internet. It's yep. www.paulromhani.com. Yep. Uh, uh, and and uh, if I'm in the country, I'm more than happy to look at doing shows. We do corporate shows here in New Zealand. and. Yeah. Maybe even set up a little tour somewhere, which would be nice. So, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, that's one of my best Christmas presents so far. It's your messiest <laughs> one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's Thank all you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Paul. Thanks.